for legal purposes, you can definitely check that out. Um, so if you need to, email me. That's the best way to get a hold of me. My voicemail, I keep getting a thing saying that my voicemail is full. I don't check my voicemail here. When I walk in the door, I drop my stuff in my office and I come into this classroom. 11 o'clock tonight, I walk out the door. Okay, so I'm in my office very little. So if you need to get a hold of me, email is the best way to do that, okay? If you don't get a response back within 24 hours, email me again. Sometimes it fell to the bottom of the list or sometimes I just forget. Uh, if you want to, for no reason at all, there is my office number. Don't use it. <laughs> there is my phone number, or my uh, class name and the section and the days and the times and the room number. We all made it there, so we're good. Uh, required materials, so writing utensil. Every day you should bring a writing utensil to class. Pencil, pen, does anyone not have one today? Everyone has one, good. Um, you should also, this is a recommended thing, get an Everlast rocket book slash sketchbook, or and sketchbook. The sketchbook is not optional, uh, but this is a pretty cool device. Um, and I didn't get paid to say this, but it is cool. What it allows you to do is you can make notes in here. So if you have any notes for this class and you take them inside this book, there's an app that you can download where you take a picture of this page. It automatically crops it, centers it, aligns it, and stores it wherever you want to store your stuff, which is like super awesome. So let's say you do sketches for your figure class. You can do some sketches inside here, take a picture of it, and it'll automatically upload it to a folder online. Or you can automatically email someone. So this is like a really awesome thing. For our final exam that we have in the class, whoever uses their stuff and uploads it to the shared folder, you can use that collaborative folder for all of your notes that you may need. You probably wouldn't need it at that point, but it's a fun thing to have to see what other people are doing. So I definitely recommend that. Um, and these do erase too. So this is a this is a regular pen, but then you can like erase the pen, and then you can use a wet cloth to wash um, every single one of the pages. And they also do come in like different colors too. So uh, I recommend getting that. You can't. You get to just Amazon. The school store will charge like triple. Um, you will need a sketchbook. So these are two examples of sketchbooks. You don't have to get either one of these. You can get a different kind of sketchbook, but you will need some kind of sketchbook for this class. Yeah. No. Um, I recommend not getting a huge one. Um, something that's portable is always best. Um, I have students who use, I have these little pieces of paper up here. Some students will use these. It's okay, but if you ever wanted to save anything or scan something, you want to have, you know, a, a area to do that. Yes, ma'am. Um, like yeah, that would be fine. I want it to be hand drawn, so as long as you're hand drawing it and not using a mouse, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, all of our assignments will build on sketches that you've drawn. Okay, in which you'll see um, our first assignment is going to be a name, pl uh, a name plate or title plate. So that title plate, you'll sketch out some ideas of what you want that title plate to look like, and then you'll animate those things inside of After Effects. Okay, so we want to have the sketches there so that we can reinforce that stuff. Um, I also have on here Fidget Cube, Chewing Gum, or Silly Putty. These are sensory devices, and they basically allow you to basically keep your mind active when you hear me talk for two hours straight sometimes. Very rarely do I talk for two hours straight. Um, basically like the first day and the second day and the third day, then after that we're a little bit more into a, a rhythm. Um, I use playing cards. I found these at a garage sale, but I'll just shuffle playing cards because it's just something that keeps your brain active so that you don't fall asleep. Right. Something that's not noisy. So if you do have gum, don't pop your gum. If you do have a fidget cube, don't go crazy with the sound effects. Uh, an external hard drive of 250 gigs or more. Some people like to bring their laptops and work off of those. Perfectly fine to do. Um, if you're not, then make sure you have some sort of external device that you can save your stuff to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just make sure that you have enough room on them. Okay. So if you have for each assignment, we're not going to go into a whole lot of stuff in there. The 250 is just basically for this class. You may have. 125 gigabytes of stuff, and the 250 just gives you a little bit of a buffer, okay? Um, now you can get a terabyte or two terabytes or three terabytes for pretty cheap. Um, you can even get by with the little thumb drives, but you want to make sure that you're maintaining those and don't lose them, okay? Um, you could also use Dropbox and other things. We'll end up 
with a lot of files, so you don't want to have to you know, spend the last half hour of class uploading to the cloud uh, for all of your stuff. Yeah, you can use thumb drives too. Uh, what's that? A uh, pair of headphones I recommend as well. Uh, all of my lectures I record, okay, or I try to record them. This one will be recorded, the next one will be recorded, and so on, so that when I do this, basically I record the lecture, I upload it to YouTube, and then you're able to watch it and kind of go through the steps of it if you need to um, later on. So bring a pair of headphones so that you're not disrupting me while you're working. Um, at least four to six or more outside hours per week to work. Um, this may be zero hours, it may be four hours, it may be 10 hours, okay? It all depends on you and how successful you want to be in this class. If you're struggling with stuff, zero hours outside of class is not gonna do it. If you're flying through the stuff, zero hours outside may be fine. Figure out how much time you need to get the assignments done and to be successful with them, and then you'll have a better estimate, okay? Um, I also recommend any motion graphics or After Effects book. Um, there we go. Um, after. I really like having something that I could physically hold in my hands and read through, um, especially that way I'm not distracted by YouTube or pop-ups or anything like that, where I can just kind of go through and just see some technique. Um, even though some of these books may be old, like this is version CS5, it still has some good concepts in there about how to use After Effects, okay? And I wouldn't spend $24 for this. Um, I'd go to the library or something, see if they have that. Uh, right, you can do that too. It's just a matter of just don't get distracted. YouTube is a great rabbit hole where you go there for one thing and then pretty soon you're like there for six hours, totally unrelated stuff. Uh, a plural site account is also recommended. They used to have these at our bookstore. <clears throat> they don't anymore, or they didn't last semester. Um, you can go through Eastern Michigan's website, which is where I've been directing people, and get it through their bookstore. It's $100 for the year, but basically everything Adobe and 3D and everything that we do in this department, they have more stuff for. So in this class, we're gonna touch the surface of what After Effects can do. We're gonna kinda hit on a lot of different areas, but they would have more detailed stuff, okay? Uh, so take everything we do in this class and say, okay, this is a basic foundation, but it can go a million other places, okay? And that's where Pluralsight would come in. People in the industry will use Pluralsight as their go-to for this kind of stuff. And for 100 bucks for the year, it's actually a really good uh, deal. Um, for this class, we'll be using Photoshop, Illustrator, and After Effects. So if you don't have the Adobe Creative Cloud and you want to work at home, definitely make sure you get the Adobe Creative Cloud. I recommend you get that probably this week so that you have it at home so you know your system can or can't handle it um, rather than waiting until an assignment is due and then you run into installing issues and whatever else. Uh, you can get a discount at the Adobe website. If you're not familiar with it, 20 bucks, you can get all the Adobe products for uh, 20 bucks a month. So that's a pretty good deal as well. Um, bah, bah, bah. We'll be using Illustrator and Photoshop to build artwork and animate inside of After Effects. <coughs> Again, motion graphics is a very loose defined or a loose term. Uh, it really is just, it's really cool stuff you'll see. Um, but you will learn principles of animation, methods for animation, workflows. And regardless of what tool we're using, we're using After Effects for this, but regardless of what tool we're using, these concepts will apply across the board to any other animation package, even traditional stuff. So if you were to hand draw your animations frame by frame, these concepts would still apply, it's just a matter of how you're applying them. If you're working in 3D, those same concepts apply, it's just a matter of how you're applying them, okay? So course objectives, you can read through that stuff. Um, here's our assignments. You can read through those assignments if you want. Uh, we will have a hotkey test and a definitions test. Those are going to happen later in September. I think it's the 17th and the 24th are the two dates for those. Um, I'll remind you as we get closer. Um, We'll have these as our assignments. You'll see that your daily drawing is worth 10 points. For whatever reason, some people don't do the daily drawing. I don't know why. It's an easy 10 points. You're in an art program. You should at least be comfortable with saying, I'm gonna practice sketching for each day. Right, even though you may not be perfect at it, you still sketch. Um, so that's 10 points, so make sure we do that. Uh, we'll also have a final exam in here, like I said. 
And if you look at the very bottom, you'll see that my total points equal 90. In some classes you may have had, um, your points are basically averaged out. So on one assignment you may get 100%, another assignment you may get a 70%, another assignment you may get a 60%. The teacher takes those scores, adds them together, finds the average, and that's your score. Not in this class. I got rid of all that stuff because it was too complicated for people to even figure out if they didn't turn something in. So it's all points. So if you don't turn in your hot, you don't do the hockey test, you don't get those points. So the highest grade you could get is a 95. If you don't do your um, drawing, the highest grade you can get is a 90, okay? So the points are directly affecting your grade. All the points for the assignments add up to 90 points. The rest of the points to get an A is going beyond. And this is basically your chance to explore the tools further. All the assignments I give are kind of like a minimalist approach to it. It's like, here's the nuts and bolts of the assignment. If you're fine with the nuts and bolts, then there you go. But if you really want to get an A in the class and you really want to explore the tools more, you'll do more work, you'll go beyond the assignment and push it a little bit further, and you'll get those extra points. These are not optional if you want to get an A in the class. 90% of my class, or 90 points in the class, is not an A, okay, it's a B plus. Um, so if you want an A in the class, you have to go beyond the assignment, and that's gonna be different for everyone. In some assignments, it may be something like adding sound effects. In some assignments, it may be adding extra stuff on top of what we've already done, or doing two versions of it, or changing colors, or doing different things. So as you start looking at the assignments, you'll see different ways you can go beyond the basics of it. Uh, point deductions. So don't text during class because you can lose points. Don't text during a lecture, definitely not. Uh, if you are absent or tardy, you can lose points there. And then other stuff, more points can get lost. So read through all that stuff so you understand it. Um, keys to success. So this is basically, if you want to be successful in the class, those are things that you should do. Show up to each class on time, ready to work. Pay attention during the lecture. Take notes. Regardless of whether you're uploading them to the server or to the cloud using this thing, always take notes. The best students I've ever had take notes because they can understand this is something I want to remember later, I need to write that stuff down, okay? Uh, make sure you understand what's required. If the assignment's supposed to be five seconds long, don't give me an assignment that's 10 seconds long or 20 seconds long for no reason at all, okay? Uh, do work during class, do your homework, meet deadlines, ask questions, push your skills. None of these here are things that you need any After Effects help for, anything else. Anyone coming into this class right away could do all that kind of stuff, okay? Keys to failure, missing classes or constantly being late, socializing during class, making up excuses, why your stuff isn't done, guessing what's required, not taking notes, and then turning in work as you feel like it. So I'm fine with talking during class if it's obviously at a reasonable level, uh, but what I don't wanna do is your assignment is two days behind and you're talking about the latest Star Wars or whatever movie, okay? It's great to have that um, networking, but you have to focus on why you're here. You're here, number one, to learn After Effects. Number two, you can talk about other stuff. Cool. Any questions on that sheet? Yep. All right, we'll go to, uh-huh. I'll get to that, okay. Uh, number two. Let's do this. Did the new people who came in, did you grab sheets? No. You did not. There should be one back, uh, do we have an extra one back there? No, we don't. All right, I'll have to print you off one. And you got one? Yeah, you got that, okay. All right, your sheet will be at that printer when it comes out. All right, so this is our next handout. Did I pass out enough? Are we still going through those? Okay. Uh, so it starts off with begin with the end in mind. So what do you think that means, or what does that mean to you?
sort of. No. <laughs> Right. So we should always be thinking about what do we want to achieve, not at the end of the day or not at the end of the month or year, but in five years, thank you, where do we want to end up? Right. Well, what's the end result? Not death. <laughs> Hopefully not death. Hopefully they're not working to death. Hopefully we're working here in this class to actually get a job doing this or enhance a skill or, or a use these skills somewhere down the line because if we're not then why are we here if we're here just to kind of kill some time well I, I to find better ways to kill time okay so think about what your end goal is think about in five years from now what it is you want to do where it is you want to end up and work your way backwards to figure out that kind of stuff okay so like when i was a student going to college i had no idea what the end goal was I knew that I wanted to do something that I would have a passion for. And so because I didn't know, I spent a lot of time kind of hopping around to different courses and seeing what it was that I liked. And eventually I, I started off in programming. I did some accounting. I did uh, creative writing. And I eventually found Photoshop and Illustrator and animation stuff that was really like, I like this stuff. I can see myself doing this. But all those other skills that I did before, all the creative writing and programming, those feed some of the stuff that I'm already doing, okay? So don't think that just because we've traveled a little bit down this road that that's pointless, it's not. Eventually we'll get to that end goal, but we have to have something to shoot for, because if we're just kind of stumbling our way like forward in life, it's kind of like harder to get anywhere, right? All right, I'm gonna skim through these. The highlighted yellow ones um, are the ones I'm going to talk about, <coughs> um, but the rest of it is just as important I just don't want to spend six hours going through this entire sheet. Um, so the college, if the college is open, we're going to be here. So you need to show up on time and work. Don't leave the class, OK? So sometimes 8 AM is typically not too bad because nobody has grabbed me and called me into a meeting. But sometimes I do get called into meetings middle of the day. And so that may make me late for class. That's fine. Come in here, do your work. I will be here or someone will be here um, for class. Um, if you have more than, if you have three tardies, that equals one absences, 12 tardies equals four absences. You'll see later on that, um, or right there, that greater than four absences of, uh, will equal a failing grade, okay? Now this is um, a guideline. If you are four absences because, like I have already had someone email me and say, hey, I'm out of town this week or next week, this week and next week, um, because I'm in another country and there was a flood and I can't get back, okay, that makes sense. You can't be here for those four times. That's fine. But when you get back, you need to push yourself to get caught up. As long as we're caught up, as long as we're doing the work and we're getting the best results that we can, I'm not too concerned with having more than four absences, okay? Some people have to work. Some people can't be here in class all the time because they have to leave for work or they have an interview or they have something going on. So just talk to me and communicate because that's important to do. Uh, make sure your assignments are turned in on time and completed, or at least 75% 75, 75 completed. Um, I have a sheet that you turn in when you do your assignments. Um, we'll see that later. But make sure that you turn it in at least that much completed. Anything less, and you get a point deducted per day. So if you remember that first sheet where an assignment might be worth three points, if you turn it in three days late, you've lost all the points for that assignment, OK? So make sure that when an assignment is due, you have it in on time. Pay attention during lectures, take notes, and ask questions. Don't work during lectures. Um, not just me, but every teacher in the world dislikes it when they're up here trying to show you what's going to happen, and then you're working on stuff, and then the second the lecture's done, you have no idea what you're doing. Okay. So make sure you're paying attention during the lectures, taking notes so that you know what is going to be happening. Um, don't leave a mess at your station. Um, this room did not get new computers, but all the other rooms did get new computers um, this summer. Okay, These ones are the newest ones of the group, so they didn't get upgraded. Uh, regardless, 
don't leave a mess at your station. Keep everything nice and tidy and clean. Um, you wouldn't want to have, you know, be working in a, a pig sty. Uh, I did bring antibacterial wipes, so you can use some of these. Once these, and I have a couple in the drawer here, once all these are gone, you're on your own. I recommend you bring your own so that you have some. There's also some Lysol ones. There's also some hand sanitizer and Clorox 4-in-1 apparently, okay? Last semester, I wasn't sick at all, knock on wood. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you wanna keep it nice and clean. If you keep it clean, everyone's healthy, and everyone gets to be here for the whole class, okay? So don't leave a mess, keep your area di uh, clean. Uh, there is a student handbook, make sure you read it and understand everything that's required of you. Be respectful of the classroom, equipment, furniture, and the students. Um, the computers are delicate. We don't want to break them. So make sure that we have plenty of, you know, care taken. Uh, be professional. Um, there's no eating in class. No eating in class, no eating in class, no eating in class. There's no eating in class, okay? Not just this room. <laughs> it doesn't matter what any instructor says. There's no eating in any of the classes. There shouldn't be any eating. Um, if you see when the lab aides go through during the summer on your desk, you can see how there's a beige and then a gray top there, people spill stuff and they get food crumbs in those areas, they lift it up, sometimes there's bugs all over it, sometimes there's mold growing in it. Don't eat in class. If you need to eat, go out into the hallways and eat, go into the S lobby and eat, find another spot to eat. This is not a pen and I keep opening up other stuff. Um, don't cheat, okay? Any work you turn in that is not your work is cheating. Whether it's a friend's, whether someone did the work for you, whether you downloaded it and turned it in, that's all cheating. You can actually fail the class, you can get kicked out of the department, um, you can get kicked out of the college if it's severe enough. And the college does track when you do cheat, there is like a record that says this person cheated in this class, and if there's a consistent record of it, they will evict you from the college and you will not be able to take any classes. So there's no reason to do any kinds of cheating. Um, assignments are not accepted without a completed assignment sheet. Again, I will show that when we get to actual assignments. Your grade is your responsibility. If you're not understanding something fully, you need to ask the question, I don't understand this, can you help me out? Can you show me what I'm doing wrong? Whatever. You may need to go onto YouTube and watch videos about a specific topic, okay? You may have to go to Pluralsight if you have that and do that, you may have to ask a friend. But make sure you're understanding all the stuff we're doing. Because in week six, we shouldn't be discussing how to set keyframes because setting keyframes is something we're gonna do next class, okay? Was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. After Effects is a lot of fun, but there's a lot of stuff to it and it can be very technical. Um, it's not like some people, they say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a born illustrator. Like if you looked at anything that Matt Bush has ever drawn, his stuff is like amazing. It looks like he came out of the womb and was just sketching Star Wars figures, <laughs> but he didn't, right? So he started off somewhere and he built his, his skills. The same thing with After Effects, the same thing with Photoshop and Illustrator and everything that we do. We have to build those skills up. And sometimes if you try to go over here without understanding this basic stuff, it doesn't work, right? So if Matt didn't know how to draw a perfect circle, how is he gonna draw a character, right? So he has to build up those skills to get to that point. Um, so make sure that anything that you're not understanding, you find ways to understand. And that may be approaching it from 10 different angles. Your grade is your responsibility. Your knowledge, your education is your responsibility, okay? Um, there's my grading scale here. So you'll see my A, if you want a solid, solid A, it's a very thin area, 98 to 100. So it's a very thin area to get a solid A in the class. Uh, a B plus is a 89 to 92. So if, even if you had a 90 in the class, that's still a B plus, okay? Because I want to make sure that the top of the list that's the people who are really dedicated. That's, you deserve an A if you get an A in this class, okay? So make sure you're paying attention to that as well if you're concerned about that. Frequently asked questions. <clears throat> so I wasn't here last class. Did I miss anything? What do you think? Yeah, you're always gonna miss stuff. Whether you're here uh, or not, the world still goes on. We don't just stop everything because you weren't here. So you will always miss something Sometimes it might be a video I show, a lecture I've given, even though I record stuff, it's still not the same thing. So you always miss something. When I was, a, um, when I was in elementary school, middle school, and high school, 
I hated school, and I basically any chance I could get, I would try to stay home. Once I got to college, it was a different story. Uh, I think I have total on my record from, I probably have 120 uh, credits from Macomb, and I have a bachelor's degree from Rochester, five absences I could probably count that I've had that entire time, okay? You wanna be here to get as much out of this as you can. Um, you're paying $500-ish for this class. That's a lot of money if you were just to like not show up to a class. It's basically throwing away like 50 bucks, right? Not really, but close enough. Uh, what is the best way to reach you outside your office hours? Answer? Email. Email, perfect. Can I bring food or beverage into class? Right, so drinks, perfectly fine inside of a sealed lidded container. No um, coffee that can just like spill over because that, if you see the blood stains on the floor, that's coffee. Um, they're not, I don't think this room has any because my students are pretty good about it. Uh, but other rooms you'll see there's like a big splotch, yeah. Uh, no food at all though. Um, even this, I have to be careful because I have knocked it over a few times and it just, it hits it right and it just pops open and there's a lot of stuff. And knock on wood again, I've never spilled anything. Uh, can I bring a mouse or tablet into class? What do you think? Yes, okay. So you can bring your own mouse or tablet into class. Um, you can plug your stuff in, everything's USB. Even on the side of your screens, there's a USB port. Plug your stuff in, but don't unplug anything from the college. That way the next person who comes in isn't screwed over. Yes, ma'am. No, you can sit in your spot and you'll see there's like a power strip right there. Oh. Yep, now yeah, because of how we have the class balanced out, there's actually like one person that doesn't have a seat. So if we needed to, there's a spot here and there's a spot back there that typically people with laptops sit, okay? Um, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Nope, everything will be fine. Yep. If you're more comfortable with a Mac and you have a laptop that's a Mac, I, there's no issue with it. The only thing you're going to have a problem with is when you're doing the hotkey stuff. My commands, I'm just going to say the PC ones, and mentally you'll convert it to the Mac ones, okay? Um, Macs, at one point they were a lot better than PCs for doing After Effects stuff, and now the PCs, because the video cards have gotten a little bit better, with these video cards in here, I'd say they're probably about even, okay? So you'll see some differences. It really depends on the, the age of your computer, too. I had someone last semester who had a, what year is this? This is 18, a 2009 Mac laptop, and stuff would just chug. They would actually have to, like, shut the computer down, let it cool down for a half hour sometimes, and then open it up and then continue working. <laughs> yeah, so you can bring in your stuff. Just make sure you don't unplug anything from the colleges. Um, some of the stations have power strips, so there's one here, I know there's one there, that back wall has power along the edge. If you don't have one, let me know and we'll get a power uh, surge protector in the middle that we have somewhere to plug into, okay? Um, and I didn't say this, but if you also wanted to bring in a VGA cable, you could actually plug into the other monitor there, that way you still have two monitors, okay? Um, I'm not feeling well, can I work at home? I don't have a ride to class today, is it okay to work from home? I was called into work and can't make it to class, is that okay? Right, your education is up to you, <laughs> right? I'm here to teach, if you miss a class, you need to make sure you get everything that you get. If you're not here, it's still marked as an absence, okay? Uh, regardless, I, regardless of the excuse, I still mark it down. At the end of the semester or you know, when you get back if there's an extended vacation or uh, extended illness or something, we'll talk about it. But I mark everything down. That way at least I know you weren't here that day, okay? Um, sometimes it is, like typically this semester we don't have an issue with it, but in the winter semester, sometimes it's like six inches of snow, the college hasn't closed it or canceled classes, and you're driving an hour already on top of all the snow stuff, so yeah. I'm fine with you working at home, but just be aware that you still have to make sure you get the material that we've done for the day and still stay on task. If something is due, it's still due that day. You'll have to get it to me some way, okay? And that just gets you ready for industry. If you're in industry and something is due Tuesday, what day is it due? Tuesday. Tuesday, right. Yes, ma'am. Yep. 
can you access YouTube? Then yes. <laughs> yep, I throw them on YouTube and then I link to it in Canvas. That way you'll know the exact lecture that I have. Yep. Um, I came in to turn in my work, but the college was closed. Is it okay to turn it in late? I couldn't get a ride to the college, but when I turned in my work, can I turn it in late? I had a problem with an assignment and no one could help me. I turned it in late. Not really a question. What do you think? No. No, right? If something's due Tuesday, it's due Tuesday. The industry doesn't care. You burn bridges very quickly if you don't make the clients happy. And in this class, I'm the client, okay? Um, so you want to make sure that you get me the assignment. Even if it's 75% done, you still get me what you have. That way I can see where you're at with it, and then I can see, okay, they've started it, they're on a good path, they ran into a couple bumps, but they'll get it done. Versus, I didn't do anything, I didn't have anything to turn in, so I didn't turn in anything, so I have no idea where you're at, okay? Turn in something. All right, so that's that sheet. Flying along. that many and then I'll give you that many. Yes ma'am. The 75%, basically what I do is you give me that 75%, I grade the 75%, and then I allow on your assignments a resubmission. Not the last couple because we don't have time, but everything else up to that, you would have time to return something in and up to that grade, okay? Um, this is a school, so we do want you to see, here's the errors that I made, here's what, how I can fix it, and then fix it and move on with it. Everything you create in this class, you should look at it as, stuff that eventually you would use for a portfolio. Has anyone here taken the portfolio class yet? No. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so um, typically you wanna take that class in your last semester. Sometimes it works out people take it in the second to last, but typically in that last year of school, you don't have the ability to combine stuff and make it presentable unless you've had this class and all the other classes to get work from. So all the stuff you do in this class, you should look at it as this is stuff that I want to do for a portfolio piece. This is something I want to add to my stuff. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so everything that we do, you should always look at it as, am I proud enough to send this out into the public? Some things are gonna be a, we're going through uh, techniques. We don't care about what the finished piece looks like. I just want you to see some things. Other pieces are, we want this to be a completely finished piece that is nice and could go out there and be presentable, okay? So we'll see some stuff uh, in a few minutes. Um, this is the MACA student agreement. You'll probably get these in other classes. You don't need to take a second one. It's the same exact thing. So you don't have to take this again if you go to another class today. Uh, welcome to the fall 2018. Whether you're a returning student or a new student, the next weeks to months will provide, with op provide you with opportunities to advance your life and your skills. Consider how much knowledge can be obtained while watching a two-hour documentary. Sitting on your couch and seeing a story gives you insight into areas you may not have been pre had previous information. Knowledge without application is meaningless though. In the 96 hours of class time, that's exactly how many hours we are scheduled to be here, you will gain an extreme amount of information and the ability to apply it. If you do not push yourself to understand the tools and retain them, then why do it? You are not here to have fun, socialize, or do movie reviews. You are here to learn, first and foremost. The fun will come as you get more comfortable with the tools. There's nothing wrong with socializing and doing movie reviews unless you give spoilers. As long as your first priority of learning is handled. Don't waste your time. You're not getting in any younger. The material isn't going away and neither is the competition. You have to dedicate time to learning and growing. It will not come magically to you. At your fingertips and during each day, you have the ability, ability to improve an incredible amount. You also have the choice to do nothing. You can rewatch your favorite Netflix series or learn how to master basic animation um, skills. You can play video games or perfect your drawing of a character. 
Think about who you want to be and where you will be in the next five years. The steps you take today will move you towards that person. The choices, however small, do affect you. Focus on who you want to be and take steps towards it. So I went open. So I have a PlayStation 4. I have a stack of video games this tall. They're all used games, so they're like pretty cheap. Um, this summer, I played zero times. <laughs> okay, not because I didn't have time, but because I wanted to dedicate my time towards stuff that makes me grow more. Okay, when I play video games, I learn nothing. I might learn, you know, how to get past a board or some hotkeys or whatever else, but I'm not actually progressing myself any further. Every day-ish, not every single day, every day-ish, I was up at about 6 o'clock, sometimes 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, this summer I dedicated, I wanted to be able to read more. That was one of the things I did. The first book I read was, um, I can't recall the name of it, but it was basically just like how to get a good start to your day kind of thing. And there's six things that this guy recommends you do. You wake up an hour before everyone else, you do these six things, and then that's a good way to start your day. So every day, not today because I already woke up at five just to get here on time, um, I would meditate for 10 minutes, I would um, do positive affirmations for five minutes, I would do visualizing for five minutes, I would do reading for 20 minutes, I would work out or stretch for 10 minutes, and then what was the other one? Hold on. <laughs> writing, that's the other one, writing. So I'd write for 10 minutes also. So these are every day-ish during the summer, that's what I would do. Now during the summer, if you're not aware of it, full-time teachers basically have the summers off. We have to do stuff, sure, but we don't have a set schedule. I had nowhere to be that day. So I could have slept in till 12 o'clock if I wanted to. I could have woke up at five and played video games all day long if I wanted to. But I wanted to start my day right. And when I did these kinds of things, that small step got me a little bit further along. So going from reading maybe one or two books a year, I read six books over the summer, which is pretty awesome. And I'm gonna continue doing that because that's something that I enjoy doing, because I want to learn stuff. The book I'm reading now, one of them I read was um, Speed Reading. I thought that might be a good one to read. Um, I read a memory book, and then I'm reading right now a mental math book. Because these are all things that I think will improve me to learn stuff better and to remember stuff better, so that's what I wanna be able to do. So little things that you do every day make a huge difference down the line. Nothing is free. Nothing is just like given to you in this world. You have to work for it. Just because you have an associates from Macomb means nothing to the rest of the world. Nothing at all. Your ability to have a demo reel, to have something you can show, actual skills, that means a lot. So if you're not here to dedicate time to push yourself, there's no point in having that fancy piece of paper. Okay? Um, so... Some important links. Number one, contact.sarcona.net. So if you need to circle that, you can draw even more arrows to it. Make sure you get on that. If you have a, um, if we open up another section, if you're not aware of it, last semester, this, well, not last semester, I'd say two semesters ago, three semesters ago, four semesters ago, um, there were three, two After Effects classes running. And they basically got to about 18, maybe 19 students in them, and that was about it. This semester, we had 18 in this class, we had 18 in the other class, and we had a wait list of 20 people. So we actually o opened another section, and our way to communicate that to people was an email blast saying this section opened up. So that area there is where I get your email so that I can email you to say a new section has opened. Yeah, because it's important so that you can see these options, because sometimes you register and you forget about stuff, and then you wait till the first day of class. And sometimes that other class that opened up, because it's a 8 p.m. class, so that other class that opened up might have worked out better for your schedule to take that one, okay? So um, get there and do that. Vimeo.com slash group slash M-C-C-M-A-C-A. Whoopsie, there we go. Um, these are demo reels or um, uh, groups from MACA students. So there's 69 members right now. These are people that are current students, past students, maybe even some future students here. 
This is Nikki. Does anyone know Nikki? No. No. Uh, Nikki graduated last semester, I believe. Um, during one of her classes, she was such a hard worker that her instructor, who worked at a company called Communicore, was like, hey, you would be awesome for this position that just opened up. And so they got Nikki and another student actually into this company called Communicore. And this is the kind of stuff that Nikki did. So for this class, one of our assignments is a character animation. And what we do is we draw some stuff out in Illustrator and we put it into um, After Effects and animate it. The assignment is typically the character bounces three times and that's all that has to happen. Oops, hold the phones. Uh, there we go. We won't watch the whole thing, but if you look at the time code here, this is about five minutes of animation. So Nikki went through and not only you know did the assignment, but she went incredibly far beyond the assignment. That's the kind of dedication it takes to set yourself apart. Because when you go out into the world, you're basically, if you don't have experience, you're basically a piece of paper that says you went to Macomb and that's it. Maybe you have experience in restaurants or whatever else. So you have to set yourself apart. Your demo reel is how we do that. So that was one of Nikki's pieces during the class here that she took. Now she's doing this kind of stuff. Uh, what does it say? 2018 motion reel. So in that, you saw 3D and 2D motion type things. Um, and that's, I think, Nikki started, I think the end of, end of last semester is when Nikki started Communicore. Um, so it's a good way for you to see what students who have graduated from the program or what students are currently in the program are doing. And then maybe if they're working in industry like Nikki is, you can actually see like this is what an industry reel looks like. You will see a huge improvement once you've gone from here and you're working in this stuff <clears throat> in just one thing, 40 hours a week. In school, this class you're in motion design, next class you might be in photography, the next class you might be in page layout, all over the place. When you're doing just motion design or just page layout or just whatever, 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, you'll really see a huge improvement in your skills, okay? Because everything just really comes together and you're under the gun. Um, so I recommend going there and obviously join Vimeo and become a member of this group. Share your stuff on there. Um, Behance.net, Motionspire, or ArtStation. I will only go to um, Motionspire.com if you want it. So Motionspire is um, animation stuff. That's not Motionspire. Uh, apparently, <laughs> it is, yeah. All right. 
So motion fire is not out right now. Uh, <laughs> let's just go to Behance then. So if you're not familiar with Behance, it's basically a way for you to share your work online. Um, how many of you have a Behance page and share stuff? Okay, it should be the opposite. <laughs> it should be everyone, okay? Everyone here needs to get out there and share your stuff. What happens is you go to graduate and you say, I'm ready for a job. And the industry says, no, you're not because you don't have a online presence, you don't have a demo reel, you don't have a portfolio, you don't have anything that you need to have to get a job. So then you rush, you throw everything together, you put it up online, somebody goes to look at your stuff and everything is dated for the exact same month, okay? August, there's everything that you've done. There's your Behance, your LinkedIn, all this stuff, all at once. You can't have that. You need to start putting your stuff out online right now so that you have something online that people can follow so you can start making a name for yourself. You have to have some sort of online presence. What is the program that we're in? And what does it stand for? Communication arts, right? So online is a communication art. And it's actually one of the hottest things right now is your ability to do stuff um, networkingly, right? So your ability to social network stuff, your ability to do YouTube, your ability to do Vimeo, Behance, LinkedIn, Facebook, all these things, Instagram. So you have to have some sort of online presence to share that kind of stuff. So Behance is one of those areas. Um, if you go here and you look at the best of Behance, you will say, I'm not gonna put my stuff up there, I'm not good enough. That's the best of Behance. This is the stuff that gets the most views, it gets the most popular people. Look at just regular stuff. Just look at like their Discover board and maybe. The internet is apparently very slow. Photography? Oops, sorry. Yeah, so look at other stuff, not just like with well, the best of Behance. Look around and see what people are putting out there that's, you know, just good stuff. As a student, your stuff is not going to be the same as somebody who's been in the industry for 10 years or five years or even 30 years, okay? Realize that. Just get your stuff out there. Make a Behance page. Start uploading your stuff. Hit a CTF. Hit SCAD. Uh, why this here? Hmm. Um, yeah, so make sure you get on Behance and do that. Don't get on Motion Spire yet. Apparently they're down at the moment. And then ArtStation as well. If you've never been to ArtStation again, it's one of those that the first page is very intimidating because there's so much like crazy awesome stuff on here. Uh, but then as you go to, you know, the stuff that people have just uploaded or the stuff that's kind of newer, um, it becomes a little bit more like reasonable, right? So get your stuff on Behance, get your stuff on ArtStation, get your stuff on as many sites as you can. If you're a photographer, how many photographers are in here? Okay, do you have an Instagram account? Yes, okay. If you have an Instagram account, or if you're a photographer, you need an Instagram account. Um, I would also recommend if you're a photographer, how many people have viewed your photos? Okay, anyone about the same? Okay, so my photography, and I'm an amateur photographer, I have over a million views. Where do you think I put my stuff? Nope. Google Maps. <laughs> uh, my contributions, photos, If you're not familiar with this, why isn't it like uploading my stuff? There it is. I have 1.3 million views, okay? And some of my photos, um, my wife does this too now. Let's see, Boston's uh, Hall Road. So you go to Boston's on Hall Road, that's my photo. <laughs> right? Now this isn't professional photography, but it is a way for me to say, I have my photos being viewed 1.3 million times. 
some of my photos have like a half a million views on it because that's the photo for Menards or that's the photo for uh, Boston's. My wife's was there, like that's hers there, that's mine there right next to each other. <laughs> it's the same thing. Um, but if you're a photographer, get these outlets, find spots to show off your stuff because anything you can put on your resume, awesome, right? Right. It's odd when I go online and all of a sudden I see three from my face and I have three from my face and all of a sudden there's three articles of some event that happened six months ago that somehow a picture I took over a year ago was three from the same picture that I took on one Sunday. Yeah. But you'd be surprised if you like that many stuff like this that you can get away with doing that. Yeah. Any opportunity you can as an artist to get yourself out there, do it because you have to do it. And then LinkedIn is the last one that's on this list. Um, and it's on the list as the last one, but it really should be a starting point for all of these. Because you can create a Behance and an art station and all these other sites, but nobody will see them unless you give them a spot to see these kinds of things. So how many people are on LinkedIn? Okay, everyone should be on LinkedIn, all right? Um, if you haven't used LinkedIn before, it's basically like Facebook in the fact that it's social but it's professional Facebook, right? So we wouldn't put a picture of us drinking at a club or something. We would put a professional picture of us um, up here. Um, we also are able to network with people. So if I'm looking for animation, motion, design, I'm gonna find uh, people that do animation and motion design. I'll find uh, jobs that do animation and motion design. And somewhere on this list, I may even find companies that do animation and motion design. And what you can do is just like a Facebook, you can connect with those people. You can get them to look at your stuff. You can ask them questions about the industry. You need to network, okay? As a communication artist, you need to get out there. Now, of course, that's scary because you've never done it before. And what if they don't say accept or whatever, but who cares? Go out there and create a LinkedIn, create a Behance, throw your stuff up there, create your profile. Right, no. <laughs> right, and most of the people are pretty open to um, doing that kind of stuff. So you can see here, um, that this is like my resume. So uh, right now I, I started this past month uh, volunteering at the Humane Society, which is actually I think a scam for me because basically I volunteer, I get to go there and play with the dogs and cats. That's like my daughter wanted to do that, so I'm like, all right, we'll do that. Um, and I can go there as often as I want and play with them. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Anytime, you, I mean, the animals too is really good. Um, Macomb Community College, animation faculty, skills advisor. I'm also a wedding minister. <laughs> and AYSO scout. Yeah. Freelance minister, yep. I married my sister and my wife's cousin. <laughs> it's a weird way to put it, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there's my education. Here's some volunteering I've done. I should actually add that other volunteering down there. Um, skills and endorsements. So one of the cool things is as you create a community here of people and you start creating your skills and things, um, teachers can endorse you and say, yes, they do know Photoshop or Illustrator and your students or your peers can also endorse you and say, yes, they do know that. <clears throat> so when a company comes to my LinkedIn page and they're like, you know, what can Sean do? They can see, okay, for 3D, 51 people have endorsed his 3D. Uh, 38 have endorsed his computer animation. <clears throat> my digital photography is only one. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, here's my tools. Here's my teaching. Here's other things that I'm capable of. Here's my letter of recommendation. So anyone can see my letter of recommendations as well. <clears throat> and then also any of my interests. Now, a company, uh, it's cheaper for them to send someone to LinkedIn and find someone looking for work than it is for them to post something and hope somebody applies for it that they want. So a lot of times, companies will go to LinkedIn, they'll type in here, uh, motion design, or er, that knows Cinema 4D uh, in Detroit. And here's Howard J. Randolph. He is in Southfield, freelance motion graphics designer. So it's scary, but I'm gonna connect to him. There we go. So he may accept it, he may not. We'll find out. Um, 
And then it gives you obviously recommendations to other people. Skip fan, skip fan, done now. More people I can connect with, okay? So that's what companies will do, is they want to connect with you because it's easier for them to find someone through here. Even people who aren't looking for jobs have gotten contacted by Campbell Ewald, Quicken Loans, Macavision. Lots of companies go on here to find different people. You can also look for companies. So let's say I want to get a job at Quicken Loans. I can see who is working at Quicken Loans that also went to Macomb. Angela McLean, Elizabeth Bosvanerti, Michael Mo, there we go. So here's all these people that went to Macomb that are also at Quicken Loans. And maybe I connect with one of them and say, hey, I'm interested in getting a job at Quicken Loans. Do you have any advice for me? Do you have someone I can contact? People get jobs this way. The, seeing a job online, and you'll see this once you graduate and you start applying. When you see a job, let's say this one, <coughs> and you hit this apply button, you type in all your stuff, and then you think, that's it, I'll get hired in a day. It doesn't happen. You may apply for 100 jobs or 200 jobs and not get a single phone call. You have to force yourself into the industry. You have to network with people, you have to get out there and show your stuff off, you have to make people realize that they want you for their company. Right. Yes, they are. Um, and just so you can see too, like Quicken Loans. Here's people that I am connected to people's Well, Quicken, and this is a kind of a weird thing, but Quicken Loans, even though they're a loan company, they do all of their own graphic design, 3D, motion design, all in-house. So we have about a dozen MACA students over there. And also all of the companies that we have over here. Yep. And they're downtown. They have a slushy machine. They get free popcorn. Like you can't, you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, they have a basketball court. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So. Any opportunity you can to connect to someone, definitely take it. So you have the links. I've told you what to do, so you have no excuse not to do those things, OK? Uh, next sheet. <clears throat> I'm going to not read everything here. I'm just going to hit the bullet points. Uh, but these are all things that can improve your work skills, OK? If you're an industry, um, typically they call these soft skills. And these are typically the things that will set apart most students, OK? Um, being punctual, being prepared, being accountable, working hard, being committed, having a great attitude, paying attention, and being helpful. So these are all things that without any previous experience in anything that you've ever done, you could do all those things. If I threw you into a medical class, you could still do all those things, right? Um, so there's no excuse not to do those. If you do those, typically that shows a good work ethic and your um, experience in the class will be a lot better. Um, if you're not totally familiar with this or remember it, when you entered the college, they had this thing called a compass test or a um, assessment test or whatever it was. Basically, you had to take a little math test, a little English test and whatever. In the education area, they're actually trying to figure out, like, is that a good dictator of where to place people in math, science, English, and all this other stuff? And what they're finding is that GPA is actually a better indicator of that. So your high school GPA is a better indicator than a test. And it has nothing to do, from what I've seen, nothing to do really with how good you are at math or science or any of that. It's all about work ethic. It's all about those. People with a higher GPA typically have a lot of these things in the list, right? And the test is only one time for the test. Right, a one-time test, right. Right. <laughs> right. And that's one of the things about it is that's one of the, the issues where they lose it because of that kind of stuff. So yeah, so they're redoing that stuff. Um, improving your learning skills. So the first one is just, you know, in improving your overall work skills. This is improving learning skills. Your education, like I said before, is in your hands. So you have no excuse 
not to be able to learn something if you don't do anything different, okay? Um, we'll do a little uh, uh, example here, right? So if you buy a gym membership, are you going to get fit? Uh, no. no. <laughs> if you buy a gym membership and you go there and you half-ass it and you're on your phone most of the time and you're on the treadmill going super slow, are you going to do anything? No. No. So where is that level of my, my output is doing something to give me something back, right? We have to find what that is. And so sometimes it's going to be different things for different people. So when I go to the gym, because I do um, typically like, well, how many days? Like 30 days in a month. So typically like 21 days a month during the summer, I would go to the gym. So I try to go like four or five times a, a week. Um, I'm not working out nearly as hard as that guy next to me, but it doesn't mean that I'm not getting the you know, results. I'm just not getting the same results as him. If I wanted to, there's certain things that I could do that would make my results better. Things like not eating anything at all except for protein. Like I'm sure that guy just goes home and just eats crazy amounts of protein. I don't do that. He might be on, uh, some people are probably on steroids. <laughs> I don't know. It's no problem. Um, uh, some people there focus on one aspect of working out over another one. A lot of it depends on your own way that you learn, the, own way, the way that you build muscle or you work out or your goals or any of that stuff. So when you look at these learning skills, some of these are going to have more of an effect on some people than others will. Okay? I've tried all of these. I tell you, for me, all of these work to some level or another. Okay? Sometimes you can't do all of them, but a lot of these you can kind of fit in. So number one, figure out your learning style. So figure out the best way that you learn stuff. Some people learn, well, let's ask, what are the ways that you can learn something? Hands on. Hands on, yep. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, Einstein, somebody, somebody famous back then said something like that, where it was like, if you want to learn something, explain it to somebody else, right? Because what happens is when you verbalize anything, you're mentally kind of like walking through the steps of how does this work, and you're trying to like figure it out more, right? Um, I've even had people say, you know, I, I can't understand how to set key, like something, something simple, I can't understand how to set keyframes in After Effects. And I say, okay, go home tonight talk to your dog and tell your dog how to set keyframes in After Effects. And they would go home, they would talk to their dog, and they would tell them how to set keyframes in After Effects. And just doing that verbalizing, even if it's to a dog, got them to mentally connect the dots. And so it made more sense for them, okay? So even simple stuff like that can do that. So we have um, reading about it and then teaching others. We have uh, hands-on, yes? Right, so uh, exposure to it is a huge thing, right? So there's all these different kinds of learning styles. Reading about it, hands-on, seeing somebody else do it. There's so many different ways to learn stuff that you have to figure out what's best for you. In this class, how many of us are in here? 20 people? I can't teach 15 different ways, right? So I can teach one or two different ways up here. So it's on you to take what I give you and try to figure out how to connect yourself to that information. So when I was a student, that's what I did. The teacher would say, you know, we're talking about databases. Go read the book and do the assignment. So I'd read the book and I said, I don't understand this. Then I could jump over to YouTube and watch a video on how to do it. What's up? <laughs> um, so it's always trying to figure out how do we connect what it is we're trying to learn with that and how do we reinforce it. Um, there's lots of different ways you can learn. So make sure that you're kind of understanding how you learn best and obviously applying that. If something isn't working, what are you going to do? Change it, right? You do the same thing, it's not going to get you different results just because you did it again. Sometimes, but not very often. It is a definition of insanity. 
uh, get enough sleep. Uh, this is a gray area because enough sleep is different for everyone. So in one of the books I read, when they say wake up an hour before everyone else, and you're waking up at five, typically for me to get eight hours of sleep, I would have to go to bed at like, what, nine the next, I don't do that. <laughs> I go to bed at like 11, 12, or one, and I would wake up around five. Once your body acclimates to certain changes, it can happen, okay? So if your body is used to getting up at, uh, getting 12 hours of sleep, probably too much sleep for you for 12 hours. So try getting up 11 hours and then 10 hours and then you know work from there. I know for me, if I'm excited about something, uh, I can stay up as late as I want to. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, this was one of my summer projects. It was like a couple hours. So we had this, which was a student who built this. And then I had this thing, which is one of my class projects I showed. And I wanted to create a little wiring system in here so that I could actually have a light bulb, have a battery, and then have a button that would work, okay? So I stayed up like an extra hour or two hours so that so I have a button. Now, it's not crazy exciting, but it is to like, I could have gone to bed and slept, or I could have stayed up an extra two hours and built that. And I'm like, that's awesome. So getting enough sleep is important but make sure you're not getting too much sleep because that's also bad for you, okay? Um, eating a healthy diet. Um, I drink pop, I eat chips, I eat pizza, I love food, okay? But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna gorge on food because I know if I eat bad food, I'm gonna be feel horrible. Uh, case in point, yesterday was my mom's birthday. We went out and bowled and then we went to Travis and I ate too much food there and I had to take a two hour nap. Like that's ridiculous, I never take naps. Um, if I eat regular, like, healthy-ish food and I drink lots of water, I'm pretty fine with that, okay? Um, so typically I have water, sometimes I have a pop, but balance, it's all about balance. Uh, exercising, like I said, I exercise about four or five times a week. <clears throat> um, any exercise you can do, the better. As part of that morning ritual of waking up an hour early, I do 10 minutes of just stretching. I could do any kind of exercise at that point, uh, but getting some kind of exercise in is important. There's actually proof that you walking briskly before a test improves your test scores, okay? And it's not magic, it's just your body is more awake, your brain is more active. So before class, if you're here 10 minutes early, do a couple laps around the building or outside or whatever. You'll find you have more energy and you're more excited to be here. This is the semester to do it. <laughs> this is the semester to do it, right. Uh, meditation. So again, something else I'm, I'm, I've done and I, it works. If you meditate and this doesn't have to be anything involved, it could be something you do for 10 minutes. If you just kind of shut off everything and just focus on breathing and not like all these crazy thoughts running inside and out of your head, it really helps you kind of focus and understand like this is what I'm trying to get across. It really sets the stage. Uh, practicing an instrument or foreign language. Um, right now I'm doing piano. Um, I haven't done a foreign instrument or a foreign instrument, foreign language uh, in a couple years. My daughter's taking French this year, so maybe I'll get into French. Um, typically, the way I learn a language, I have about a half hour, 40 minute drive from home. I'll put a CD in or go to YouTube or whatever and just play something through my audio deck that's just, here's how you learn a language, right? They say something, I repeat it back and forth. So even simple stuff like that. Um, drawing and doodling. We'll be doing that one at least from the list. Uh, and then keeping an open mind. Um, it's very, very, very easy for you to say, I'm insane, just shut up, I wanna get out of here, I have stuff I have to do. But keep an open mind because you never know what can work for you. The second you say, um, I don't have enough time to sleep, I can't eat healthy, I don't have time for that, I can't exercise, blah, 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 it's, it shuts it down, it just stops everything from working. When you go to work out, do you think it's more physical or mental? Mental. mental. It's like 90% mental, 10% physical, right? So everything here is mental. If you dedicate the time, if you, if you uh, arrange your schedule so that you can add these things in there, even for little bits at a time, you'll see huge results. When I first started working out, uh, my wife was like, oh, let's get this, we will go to Lifetime. Let's get a Lifetime membership. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> And I didn't want to do it because I like eating. So I said, uh, I don't want to go there. And she's like, oh, we'll do it. 
So the first time I went there, I'm like, all right, you know, it was okay. The second time it was okay. My third, fourth, fifth time, I really started getting into it. I really started like, okay, I'm seeing results. I'm, you know, I'm excited to go. And so now I'm like pretty much not addicted, but I like going there. I like working out. I like feeling the way I feel at the end of a workout. It's exciting. Yeah, if I kept it. Right. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We did we did a cycle class the other day. Which you've never done a cycle class. It's like insane. Um, it's very painful, but it's insane. But keep an open mind because you don't know what will work for you. The second you say it's not going to work, it ain't going to work. Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. <laughs> Right, and you'll find too that branching outside your comfort zone is the best way to experience things. Because you may not like going to the gym now, but you may say, hey, if I spend an extra 10 minutes at the gym doing this or that, it improves my ice skating and then I wanna do this kind of stuff, okay? So all of these things improve. It's not just like, you know, learning a language isn't going to directly affect your animation skills, but what does happen is it affects your brain. Whenever you learn a new language, you learn a new skill, you learn these kinds of things like music, it changes the wiring on your brain so that your brain is a more effective learner. So the more you can do that, the better off of a student you're gonna be, the more adapt you're gonna be to learning, the happier you'll be in life, okay? Uh, and you never know what's gonna open that door for you. Some companies like Macavision, they send their people over to um, Japan. They send their people over to Germany. So if you knew German or you knew Japanese, that might be a good way to get into a company that sends people to Germany or Japan, right? Uh, attendance policy, the brief of this, you have four absences for this class. Uh, it's not like you get four absences like, you know, tokens or something. If you have more than four, you fail the class, like I talked about before. So don't have more than four. Try not to have any absences if you can, okay? The more time you're here, the more time you're learning. Simple as that. Uh, any equipment that you have for this, this class doesn't really have any equipment that we loan out. Uh, we may have a tablet or a tablet pen. Make sure I get those back. Make sure you're not destroying those. Um, the tablets and the pens are incredibly expensive. If you're not aware, a tablet pen is like $100 for us to replace. It's insane. Um, use of hardware in classrooms. So make sure you're not destroying the computers. Make sure you're being respectful of them. Don't unplug stuff. Do not eat in the classroom. Uh, beverages in sealed containers, no loud music, mm, don't modify system settings. For some reason, uh, some people's priorities are to come into a computer and immediately change the background and the screensaver and all this other stuff. It makes no sense. <clears throat> Focus on why you're here. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's that sheet. Questions on that sheet? Yes, ma'am. If you go, brands mean nothing to me. <laughs> if, you go to, if you go to Amazon and you look up a Samsung, you may find horrible reviews for this Samsung, but great reviews for that one, right? Right, so anytime I look for anything, this is, um, I started off in, in hardware at the college, um, like installing computers and stuff, so people always come to me for this. So I would say, like, let's say I'm looking for an external drive, Yeah, well, first thing, four stars and up. <laughs> and then if you're a Prime member, definitely click that one. And then this one here, that looks like a good enough one for me. Okay, it's got mostly four stars uh, or five stars. With any of them, the warranty. If you can get one with a three-year warranty on it, great. Or extended warranty. You're talking about Mac or PC? They should be compatible with Mac and PC. You can you can uh, format them. Right. Well, you can format it still. Yep. Yeah, we can do that too. I can show you if you bring in a hard drive, you want it formatted for Mac and PC or just PC. Uh, we can do that too. 
Um, I also recommend if you do get an external, get a portable one versus like a desktop one. The desktop ones need external power. The portable ones, it's just a cable that plugs into your laptop, okay? And I also recommend smaller, like I'd rather have five one terabytes than have one five terabyte that I'm bringing with me. Because as I travel between campuses and my house, anything could happen to that five terabytes and that's five terabytes gone. It's a lot easier to back up one terabyte or to remove one terabyte than it is for anything else. It's a little bit more expensive, obviously. Like four terabytes is 100 bucks, and one terabyte is 50 bucks. That's difficult to see. I lost, just so you are aware of the cost of things, um, I lost my laptop hard drive uh, 10 years ago or so. No, eight years ago. Um, I had nothing backed up, and it cost $1,000 for them to go through and recover all my pictures of my kids that I did not have backed up. So back your stuff up. I have a Google account now. I pay $20 a month um, or $20 a year, and that backs up all my photos. You can do it for free with lower res, but it backs up all my photos and all my videos to Google Photo. So all my photos are up there now. So in case I lose something, um, I don't, I'm not totally without it. Cool. Do we need to take a little five minute break? Yes? Okay. Let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back and pop. Uh, the reminder for basically drawing 15 minutes. So some people get confused when I say drawing every day. It's not every class day. It's not once a week. It's literally every single day. Um, and this is something that you should do every single day, drawing 15 minutes. It literally is 15 minutes. You just focus on drawing something for 15 minutes. I'll get into the topics once we get there, but for now, just you'll see it. Um, Monday the 3rd, no school. We have uh, Labor Day that day, so you can barbecue the last day of summer, I guess. And then November, we're off for a week, so that Monday we get off, we make it up then. And then after that, the semester's gonna be over in December. Now it seems crazy, like we're only here September, October, November, December, it's like four months, that's all we're here. It seems longer, right? It's incredibly long, but it's not. Uh, but you'll notice in week 10, that's the last time that I'm checking your drawings um, as far as like what the assignment is for grading that, okay? So your drawings are actually graded separately. I go through um, every Monday that you're here and I just basically like check it off. You've drawn for 15 minutes, right? That's all I'm doing. <coughs> Week 10 is the last day I'm checking the drawings. You're still drawing, but it's for the assignment. So however you want to bar uh, budget your time. Last year I had people who would want to do like an hour of drawing on Sunday, an hour of drawing on Wednesday, an hour of drawing on the week, on Saturday too. So they budgeted their time differently. Even for this, you can do that because I'm not checking it until Monday. As long as when you come to me, it looks like you've done at least 15 minutes of drawing each day, okay? Um, so just because we're not drawing here doesn't mean you don't have to draw. You still have assignments. You still need to plan stuff. It's just you can budget your time differently and I'm not gonna check your stuff after that, okay? Questions on the calendar? It notice it's three hole punched, so you can put it inside your binder, make notes on there, stuff is due, stuff's happening, whatever, so it makes it easier for you to see that stuff. Um, the grid that I have there is just a fun activity. Um, so what we're going to do is you're going to take your pencil or your writing utensil, whatever you have. I'm gonna give you a topic, and you're gonna have like 15 seconds for each one of those boxes and you will draw or write something in each one of those boxes, okay? No, 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 I will tell you what to draw and write, <laughs> okay? So you will have 15 seconds. I will collect them afterwards and then at some point, at some point, you will, yeah. It will be initials on there as one of the boxes, okay? It'll be the initials uh, and then they'll cut them out. The lab aides will cut them out. Ideally, I wanted to have these already pre-printed, nice cards, Ready to go, but they were not ready to go today. I slipped out of mine. Yeah, I slipped out. I got it in the car. It just slipped out. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm just going to give you a topic, and then you'll get like 15 seconds to draw that topic in there. Okay. Yes. Your interpretation of it. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me get my timer going here. Okay. So keep it loose, be relaxed.
This isn't a graded thing. This is just a fun thing, okay? All right. Right. <laughs> All right, ready? Box number one, your favorite animal. All right, box number two, that one quick. Drawing a rabbit. Bless you. Bless you. Box number three, draw a car. Box number four, write if you are working now. Box number five, favorite color. Whatever you like. <laughs> Box number six, draw a cursive S. <laughs> that was a very good sound bite. Why do they do that to the kids? They don't, it's weird. Well, they, my kids still learned it, but they, the weird thing is, and I'll go into the cat in a second. <laughs> uh, number seven, draw a dog. Number eight, your favorite number. Number nine, the degree you're attempting to get. Number 10, draw a square. <laughs> Number 11, years of experience drawing. Whatever you like. No, draw the number of years you've been drawing. Uh, number 12, draw a jump. Jump. <laughs> Your interpretation of a jump. Number 13, favorite song. Fourteen, a couch. Fifteen, ideal job. Sixteen, write your initials. Uh, 
All right, so um, a couple of things that I want to go over. So motion design is, um, I want to type real, that's what I keep doing. Um, it's a loose term, like I said, there's a lot of stuff there. Imag it's, it, if you think of it like stuff that I draw, I animate. So this can take many forms. One of those forms could be um, a hand-drawn animation of something that can still be a motion graphic because if I were to draw something animating, it's a graphic that is then animated and put into motion. If it's in 3D and it's motion, it's typically um, a motion design type thing. Um, if I had a car though that was photorealistic and I have it like on a turntable, I wouldn't really consider that to be a motion graphics thing, okay, even though it's a 3D type thing. The cool thing about motion graphics is typically they're a little bit more abstract, a little bit more fun looking than um, stuff like that. So here's motion graphic stuff. Oh. Hey. I just created this real quick. Be careful of it. Yeah, be careful of it. Yeah. Make sure you do it. Remove from the outreach right before the work. There you go. Okay, so this is a tutorial, but watch right at the beginning of that. That's a title bumper, right? So every one of our assignments is gonna have um, certain information on this title bumper page, and how you design that is going to be up to you. I'm gonna show you an example of it, but your assignment is gonna be animating your own design to that, okay? We want to keep it nice and clean. Something like that is very clean, okay? Simple graphics, simple type, that's all it is, okay? Um, That one. There you go. There's another simple one. There's another one. Okay, so you can go online and actually look up and see more After Effects tutorials for this kind of like type animation thing. We will have six elements that we need to fit on ours. So your sketches over the next week will be organizing these six different elements. How many are there? Six elements. Oh, no, oh how many sketches? Yeah. Oh, you're doing one. Okay. Yep, you're doing one that you'll use for every assignment, okay? So we will have um, on there, we will have our name, obviously. Come on, sorry, corner. Uh, I will have the assignment name. I will have the assignment number. I will have the class name, okay? Uh, what else did I put on there, class name? Let me just pop in real quick and verify what I had on there. There's one that Evan did. Uh, oh, sorry, there's four elements, not six. Four elements. Uh, so your name, your assignment name, the assignment number, and then your class name, those are the four elements, okay? So as you're doing your sketches, we want to figure out the proportions that we're using, right? So if we're doing a video, you're gonna go widescreen, right? So it makes no sense to kind of design it portrait. There's nothing that we would do for that. So design all your stuff widescreen, and then just kind of figure out placement for each one of these little elements that you would have on the screen. Like in um, Evans here, he has this little fancy stuff happening. And then he has his stuff, Evan Kapinski, one page transition, okay? So for assignment two, we would change the one to a two. We would give the name there, and then that would be the one for the second one. Here's Anna's. Now, you, it went by quick, but here's assignment one, page transitions. And then there's her name. And then here's Nick's. Okay. So, uh, and then obviously class name is added to this list. So uh, find different ways that you wanna animate those kinds of things into it, okay? So it could be as simple as, 